Welcome, everyone, to the L7C Podcast Hoops Edition. Today, we are going to be talking about what went, what went down during the trade deadline. And we got to have the basketball aficionado, Mr. Evan Debo. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing good, Martin. Uh, it was a, a fun trade deadline. It was kind of underwhelming um, in some regards, but also um, very interesting in, in other regards. Excited to, to talk about it and see um, how it's shaped the uh, the basketball landscape and, and the playoff picture here heading into the next uh, two, three months. Yeah, man, I'm with you. It was I guess it was underwhelming because there weren't like super big names that were potentially being traded, but there was a lot of action, a lot more than I thought would happen. And what did you think? Yeah. Um, Woj put out a, a tweet um, late last night um, mm-hmm. or early yesterday morning that, that compiled, actually there were the most um, players moved uh, involved the most teams and there were the most trades on a trade deadline uh, day ever. So there were 16 trades. There were 23 teams involved and 46 uh, rostered players uh, relocated in some uh, capacity or another. I think a lot of those trades were, um, a lot of those trades were, uh, you know, just kind of like ancillary, like small contract moving stuff to make this happen or throwing pieces to make this happen or, um, you know, creating some flexibility down for free agency and stuff heading into next year. But there were some big ones there. So why don't you kick us off here? What was, what was the, uh, what was the biggest trade you saw uh, uh, go down on Wednesday? Biggest trade I, to me, was actually the first one that we had listed in our discussions was Owen Depot, Victor Owen Depot to the Miami Heat. I did not see that on my big board of trade uh, moves going into Thursday. So I, I thought that was very interesting because the Miami Heat team, obviously, they went to the finals. Last year, and Victor Owen Depot, as uh, you and I being Cavs fans, you, the last year LeBron was here, that man was pushing us to game seven in the first round. So he's a very good player, but he's been, he had his injury and bounced around. So I'm really interested to see how he's going to be with Jimmy Butler and uh, Pat Riley, Eric Spolster, and Miami really didn't have to give up uh, Duncan Robinson or Tyler Hero. So they got to keep their core pieces and get a guy like Victor. And if he's 75 to 80 percent on what he can be, it could push the Heat to potentially get back to at least the Eastern Conference Finals. What do you think? Um, I, there's a lot of di- uh, there There's just a lot of um, uh, pieces to this, I think, for me. So, I mean, I, I think first and foremost, I don't I don't know that Oladipo can get back now granted every COVID's a giant blanket over everything so you can't say yep. this is for certain but i don't know that oladipo is the oladipo of old that we that we know of um and mm-hmm. after his after his uh his big energy uh, his big injury i should say um he wasn't the same in the bubble he did, really didn't want to play in the bubble yep. um and then ultimately he got moved in that uh that blockbuster james harden deal uh to houston and um, in in Houston too, uh, you know, Houston had made the efforts to try to pay the man because uh, his con- he isn't expiring, and he he turned down their um, their offer. So he's averaging twenty point eight uh, five rebounds a game and four four point seven assists. So obviously that's uh, that's a lot of a lot of minutes and a lot of a lot of scoring ability and, and distribution ability coming to Miami. That's you know already got some kind of some guard heavy stuff with with Goran Dragic, Kendrick Nunn. Mm-hmm. Um, Tyler Hero, obviously, although Tyler Hero's kind of regressed a little bit uh, this year. I mean, he's got times where he pops pops up a little bit here and there, but I mean, by all accounts, if you look at the statistics and stuff, you know, look looking at the Cavs, I mean, Darius Garland's having a better season than Tyler Hero. That's not me being a homer. That's statistically uh, points and assists um, from a, a, a ball dominant guard. So, so in the in the deal, the Rockets get back. Um, uh, old Avery Bradley, they get uh, Kelly Olenek, um and a 2022 first round um, swap first round swap right. So uh, for the listeners, if they don't know what that means, that means um, and that includes the Brooklyn Nets pick in there, too. So they of their their first round picks and stuff, um, if they have if Miami has a worse record and higher pick, 
uh, Houston has the right to switch with them, but it's not likely. I mean, the Rockets played last night. Um, they had 101 points at like with like seven and change to go in the fourth quarter. They ended the game with 101 points and lost uh, in in large fashion. Like they they didn't score for almost eight minutes. It was bad. They're a bad team. Um, so that's not going to happen. That's just kind of a throw in. Hey, boss, look what I got. Also in the deal. So um, I think, yeah. I mean. The pieces with Miami, I think, yes, it's a, it's a big upgrade um, for Miami and, and more depth with a, a proven score, even if he's not the Victor De, uh, Oladipo of old. The Heat are currently sitting in the eighth seed right now, so, I mean, they're in the plan. They're not even, you know, guaranteed, guaranteed a playoff spot yet, but this could be what bumps them up into, you know, the top four, you know, with the Hornets losing. Uh, Lamelo. you know, they might sink a little bit. Um, who knows with the... Uh, the Hawks and the Knicks down the stretch, but I mean, they could easily make a jump in my eyes uh, with, with this move here. But the one thing really, we haven't talked about too much in this deal. I mean, on the, I guess on the rocket side was, I mean, if you're the rockets, you essentially passed up um, in that, in that Harden deal. You basically said, we don't want Jared Allen. um, And we don't want, uh, we we don't want Torian Prince like so obviously the Cavs got him and we're like gladly like yeah we'll take that in there so you know at the end of your yes you got a lot of picks but like at the end of your James Harden deal because now you've like you've traded a trade again by shipping Old Depot out after a couple months that you got you essentially are left with Avery Bradley Kelly Olynyk and a a first round swap rights pick that like isn't going to happen like like that's what you got for James Harden. Like I know they got other pieces in that in that deal um, originally. I'll need to go back to refresh uh, my memory here, but I mean, Martin, that's bad. Oh yeah, oh yeah, it's not good at all. And they just uh, recently just ended their twenty twenty game losing streak. Yes. So that's like they're it's, they're just not in a good spot, and the way that they gave up games started who. Right now is a good amount of people's front runner for MVP because you haven't been watching him. He has oh he's been balling. He has been balling very well. So I, I don't know what this organization is gonna do going forward. Uh because they they didn't get really anything for Harden. Maybe if they would have traded, I know we talked about it in previous spots, they would have traded him from the get-go. Maybe they could have got more, but as soon as they kept waiting and waiting, it, I just feel like they messed that up hugely. So if we rewind to that that James Harden deal on on January uh, January thirteenth, mm-hmm. so there was a pathway there for Houston to have Jared Allen um, and to have Karis LeVert, and instead, I mean they did they did get the three unprotected first round picks in twenty two, twenty four, and twenty six from Brooklyn, and uh, a number of picks pick swaps in the opposite years. But I mean, let's be honest, like who's gonna who's gonna finish with the worst record? Is it and I, I realize they're, they're not long, long-term deals that Durant and Irving are signed to um, and and stuff like that. I mean, they could all hop ship and Brooklyn could be bad towards the end of this. But, I mean, you did get the picks and stuff. I mean, player-wise, you you passed on Karis LeVert and Jared Allen. And you got back Old Depot, who you flipped. So, like, player-wise, again, you get Avery Bradley, you get uh, Kelly Olenek, another pick swap that's not going to happen. and. I believe now they didn't get Dante Exum in that deal. I don't think, Um, but I mean, it, yeah, just, just bad all the way around. Um, What this is going to go down is like, I saw it on Twitter the other day. This is going to go down the, the James Hart deal. I mean, it's going to go down as like one of the, the worst returns on a all time score uh, in the history of basketball, like in a trade ever. Yeah. Like it, this is bad. No, so I, I think the Heat are definitely winners here. Um, they've kind of, you know, for the reigning Eastern Conference champs, I mean, again, they're they're sitting there at the eighth seed. They're at uh they're under 500, 22 and 24. Um, only 500 at home, 12 and 12, 10 and 12 on the road. They're they're four of their last four and six in their last 10. I, I think this will help elevate them definitely heading into the home stretch, but uh, this is just one of the many, many trades. Again, there were 16 that went down. Um, Martin, let's uh, let's shift gears to, I think, the the other big Hold one on, here. Hold on, Evan. One, one more thing on the – would your opinion of them change 
if because currently they're right now they're the front runners for Lamarcus Aldridge and time recording. If we finish recording and he signs with the Heat and then they got Victor and Lamarcus, would your opinion of them change? I don't I don't think so. I mean I I uh, mean I it's not and I I don't have a bad opinion of it. I think the Heat got better because of this. Mm-hmm. Um and so I mean if they were if they were always a candidate for Lamarcus Aldridge anyway, regardless if they did this deal, then yeah. um that's just even furthering their case to get closer to the the Nets um Sixers Bucks conversation mm-hmm. because I mean from four to four to ten it's a crapshoot. Yep. Um and with how far the Raptors have fallen and the Wizards that people project to be a playoff team who's not the Magic are no longer a playoff or bubble team. Um, you know, they're they're definitely gonna shoot back up to a top four team, I think, especially now with Lamarcus Aldridge and his, you know, I, again, he doesn't have a whole lot left in the tank. He's 35, but I mean 13.7 and 1.7 um assists a game and four and a half rebounds a game. Um considerably down from what he's averaged for his career. But I mean, Pat Riley continues to shuffle the deck and he didn't have like you said, he hasn't give, given up hero and getting all these players in. Um he's still got precious Achiwa. Is it a big he just drafted this year? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Miami, Miami's got a lot of versatile players who can switch, who can play multiple positions, they can go big. They can go small. They can really go big now if they have Lamarcus too. So, but no, I think that even helps helps their case even more. Okay. Um, as they look to get back in the standings. Okay. Well, let's let's go to that next big one that you're about to hit on. Yeah. So that one would be uh, Aaron Gordon to Denver. That's- and uh, what what are your initial thoughts on so? If you're if you're the Nuggets, you lose. Um, you you kind of did a gamble and and didn't re-sign Jeremy Grant uh, to a mega deal. Who got that with Detroit, and he's been absolutely balling out this year. Twenty three point three points a game, five rebounds a game, uh, almost three assists a game for Detroit. Um, a grant, he's getting a lot more shot volume and everything else to help elevate that too. But um, if you're the Nuggets, you you almost kind of get your your replacement and and arguably a, a better defender and Aaron Gordon, who a lot of people have just been asking for years. Man, is he just what else could he be if he were not stuck in Orlando? Well, now we get to see what it is. You you um, surround him with uh, the likes of uh, Michael Porter Jr., um, Jamal Murray. Obviously, uh, uh, Joker. I mean, it's it it's a it's another big get, get for for Denver, who also um, in a separate deal got a, a really good backup gig, uh, uh, a backup big in Javale McGee from the Cavs, who's had a really really great year for us off the bench. Tough to see him go, but um, excited for him to have the opportunity to be back in the playoff hunt. Um, he's he's going to add a, a uh, another dynamic to them with their second unit, so. I like the move for Denver. I definitely think Denver was another big winner of this trade deadline. Um, Martin, your thoughts? Uh, yeah. So when you talked about earlier about like what Aaron Gordon can be outside of Orlando, I was actually asked why when he demanded a trade I think early this week or like last week, I was like, so who's going to trade for Aaron Gordon? Because I don't know what he can do outside of Orlando and what I know him as the um, Skywalker and things that super athletic things like that. So him going to Denver with the people they already have, another MVP candidate, uh, the Joker, Jamal Murray. They still they got to keep Michael Porter uh, Porter Jr., which I thought was phenomenal because he's really coming on. Like They're a scary team, and I feel like they've flown a little under the radar for a team that made it to the Western Conference Finals and came back from two 3-1 deficits uh, last year to make it to the Conference Finals. But when they got to the Lakers, they really were no match for them. So this gives them another... A big body, athletic, another person that you can body up on LeBron when you get to that point. I don't think they got worse from this. I thought they got better, and people need to be on the lookout for Denver Nuggets again. Absolutely. Um, you know, for Gary Harris, you know, Gary Harris had some really good – tons and tons of injuries, and, and finally Denver um, Denver shipped him out in, in favor of Aaron Gordon, um, just a guy who – a lot uh game wise um but uh but a very capable guard so um you know they they obviously sent him out in the deal again the protected first that was the bread and butter of it but denver definitely got better um we we talked about a little bit um before the recording got uh cut and we restarted um about they also picked up javale mcgee from the Cavs, averaging eight and five off the bench for us so i really love that move as well i mean i think the two 
there really, really complement the rest of the the Denver uh, roster, um, particularly helping out the the second unit, um, you know, for them. And, you know, you put them around Michael Porter and uh, Jamal Murray and and Joker, who, you know, could end up, you know, based on injuries, he very well could be our MVP when it's all said and done. So um, Denver is in currently sitting in the five spot in the, the West. They are. Um, they are game and a half back of the Lakers who don't have AD and uh, LeBron right now. So they very well could hop them here in the next next week or so. And and who knows on the uh, the Clippers. So um, my Clippers might be good unless I'm unless you have anything more to say on on Denver. Clippers might be a good spot to head to for our, our next big trade the trade deadline, Martin. No. Yeah, let's let's go to the Clippers because, you know, last year they. Uh, aggravated us a lot on the pod because we were wanting that Clippers versus Lakers Western Conference Finals and the Lakers did their part and the Clippers failed and showed glaring holes in their 3-1 lead against Denver and then blew it. So they have been talking about getting a point guard and there was a lot of chitter about uh, getting Lonzo Ball from the Pelicans and Lonzo State. They traded Lou Williams and two second round picks for Rajon Rondo from the Atlanta Hawks. And if people remember, he was on the Lakers just last year, winning a championship, showing us playoff Rondo mode. Evan, what did you think about this trade? This was the most perplexing one, I think, of the day for me. So Rondo was essential. I mean, Rondo was almost kind of somewhat looking for a job when the Lakers signed him last year. And obviously he was he was arguably their um, their third best player through all the playoffs when the Lakers won the title in the bubble last year. Um, so, I mean, there's that, but then also you have six man of the year in um, who's won it uh, a couple times and just an absolute scoring machine in Lou Williams. I, I know both players are, are older, but um, if you're Atlanta, you get, um, you get Lou Williams for Rajon Rondo. Um, and you get two future seconds. Like I, if anything, you'd think two future seconds were going the other way. Um, I, I mean, if you just all things being equal, Martin, I mean, who would you rather have Rondo or Lou Williams? And I, I know they have different skill sets. Rondo sets up your offense, the IQ is out of the, out of the gym. Um, he's not what he used to be defensively when he played for the Celtics by any means, um, or even the Pelicans for that matter. Um, but I mean, this game's about buckets and Lou Williams, who, what team wouldn't want to have that guy coming off the bench with their second unit? Yeah. Did you think, did you think that was a little bit, I mean, seconds are things, but did you have that same approach looking at this that like, Hey, I, I would have thought maybe you would have paid more for Lou Williams than you would you know, um, let alone them kind of being at the point in their careers, I guess, equally where they're straight up for each other. Yeah, with this one, I, I was confused because, like you said, Lou Williams is, a, is an offensive uh, weapon. And for the Clippers, a team where, I mean, they supposedly have two of the best perimeter defenders with Kawhi, Kawhi and uh, Paul George, and they wanted to get a point guard to apparently run this offense, which now you have Rondo, and Patrick Beverly is still there, right? Yes. So you have Rondo, uh, so. Beverly will probably be on the bench. Well, I don't know who's going to start. But either or, if you when one of them comes out, you're not getting anything more offensive um, from either of them. So I found that very interesting. And Lou Williams, which I actually just read that, he was thinking about retirement until he got Yeah, started. he said he was so mad about, I mean, he basically, saying it without saying it, but saying it was like so mad that he had given everything to the Clippers, basically. And he was thinking about that. And then he's like, yeah. Then I thought more of it and heard from all the fans that love me and everything else. It's ever I'm coming home to Atlanta and uh, and back to those uh, lemmy pepper chicken wings from Magic City, baby. Yep, yep, that's where he's he's going. So that that was interesting. But and then Atlanta, I mean, they get another, they get a high power score. He's going to be reinvigorated to prove himself. Uh, he'll be there with Trey Young. So yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know if this makes the Clippers better maybe they're thinking they're going to get the same playoff rondo that the lakers got but i I don't see what they're seeing unless 
they're going to pick up someone like on the waiver wire who can score. But I, I don't know. I don't know if this makes them better. I definitely, I mean, it's, it's tough. So you're right. I mean, when it comes to guards on the Clippers roster, um, you know, if you're, you've got essentially Reggie Jackson um, mm-hmm. and you've got, uh, where am I missing? Oh yeah. You've got Reggie Jackson. You've got Pat Beverly trying to set you into your, your off get Kawhi and Paul George um, in different off ball situations to, to help get them some, uh, some movement and, and Marcus Morris and Serge Ibaka is your kind of scores on the side and whatever at this stage is only a plus if he puts the ball in the basket once. Um, but outside of that, I mean, here is who they have coming off the bench. You've got Zubac, you've got Daniel Oturo, um, their uh, draftee from this past year as a center, you've got uh, Patrick Patterson, brick and threes probably still. Um, Luke Kennard, um, Ohio kid, uh, who they, they got from the, the Pistons, who's been really hit or miss. Yeah. Reggie Jackson, Patrick Beverly, you know, whichever one's coming off the bench to Terrence Mann, like that scares me that scare. They have, I, they have no depth looking at their roster. I mean, it's, it's oh. almost the same conversation you and I were having a year ago talking about the Boston Celtics of like, you're so now granted Paul George and. Kawhi Leonard are all league and Marcus Morris senior and uh, Serge Ibaka are not scrubs by any means. They can also put the ball in the basket. They can defend They're gritty. Um, they're they're going to grab boards and help you out too. But I mean, they, they desperately need to like hope that like a LaMarcus Aldridge or somebody like that can um, they can bring him away from the heat, which appear to be the front runner right now. Um, it, or just to find some other scoring. I mean, they, they definitely need it in terms of, uh, backup, uh, backup guards and, and wing scoring definitely in, in paint scoring when your centers are Ibaka and Zubach. I mean, that's it. When you go against the Denver Nuggets, you're going to need more than those two competing against, uh, Jokic and now JaVale McGee. I'm going to go against Anthony Davis, Mark Gasol and the Lakers. Like you're, you're going to need some, some size that can defend and score especially when your, your folks get into foul trouble. I mean, if Serge Ibaka has three fouls in the first half, you're screwed. Um, you know, same thing with Zubach too. It's, they, they definitely need to somehow figure out how to address some things depth wise here with, with some of these buyouts. And um, I, I'm not sure that Andre Drummond and LaMarcus Aldridge are good candidates for what they need. I think they do need some more backup wing scoring, but yeah, just a perplexing trade. Yeah. Yeah. And since someone who recently got bought out and he's another big man on the market, does Andre Drummond help them in any way? I think, I, I think so. I think that, I mean, it, you really get into a big lineup. So, I mean, I can, I can see a lineup maybe where you've got Beverly at the one, uh, you put Paul George at the two as a giant two, um, and then Kawhi, Ibaka, and Drummond. I, it's kind of a muddied up driven offense. Like it's not, you're not going to get up and down a lot, but I mean, I think, I think that could be a good spot for an Andre Drummond. I mean, I, I think LaMarcus Aldridge could, could easily fill in there um, as well. Um, I think he would help in terms of distribution, obviously a lot better than Andre. Andre's an underrated passer from the elbow for sure. Um, especially if you get a couple bigs in there that, I mean, Andre is a really good high, low, um, player, if you got a second big, we saw that a lot with Cavs and lineups with him and McGee, him and um, uh, Larry Nance, a lot of um, elbow down low. They kind of switch back and forth to be sender receiver between some of those high low passes. And uh, it, it worked out well, but that could be a good landing spot for them. But I, I think their their issues are more guard heavy, I think, at this point in, in, in terms of depth. But, um, you know, you could address some some scoring needs with a second unit if you have Andre Drummond out there with and Amir Coffees and I guess Jay Scrubs of the world, whoever Jay Scrubs is. Shout out Jay Scrub. So going back to uh, Orlando, obviously they got rid of Aaron Gordon. It's it a fire like sale. They're, yeah, they're, they're cleaning house. And uh, Vujovic, I think he was the first, I guess, big trade of the day going to Chicago. I didn't see that coming at all, did you? I didn't, but I, I do like the move for Chicago. So Chicago, obviously, um, yeah, they end up, uh, biting it on Wendell Carter. 
Um, when he was obviously injured his, his first year, and that was the big piece of, of what they gave up in that deal. But um, I think for them, that adds some stability to the front court with a continue to develop your Patrick Williams and your Kobe White to the world now. And Patrick Williams is has had a really, really good year. Um, and then you've also got some vets to put around him. I mean, this is ideally how you, um, you know, rebuild and still be competitive. You still got Thaddeus Young. You still got Denzel Valentine off the bench. Um, you've got a, a, a phenomenal 20 point scorer in uh, Nikola Vucevic now who can, you know, at times he can go for 35, 40 a night. Uh, Garrett Temple's buried on their bench. I didn't even realize that today, too. I mean, another veteran guard. Um, but they're going to lose Lowry Markin in, um, they, uh, in free agency coming up. I think he's a, he might be restricted so they can match, but they haven't been able to come to a deal on that guy's, that guy's going to get paid somewhere else. He's too good of a player to be kind of wasting away on, on the bulls and how they're using him. And plus he's frustrated with, I think how they're using him too, but I like the move for the, I, I do like the move for the bulls. Um, but I, I just was reading the the article uh, from the ringer on the magic. So last, last Wednesday, um, Orlando played the Suns, um, And after that game, and then the subsequent trade deadline uh, after the uh, four fifths of their starting lineup from that game against the Suns now is going to suit up for someone else. I mean, it's absolute all out fire sale there. Um, in the standings, they are uh, 15, 15 and 30, they're second worst in the East. And 15 and 30 would put them at one to uh, fourth worst team in the NBA because the Rockets and Timberwolves are so bad. Um, but uh, they're just percentage points uh, a little worse than the Wizards because they played two two more games and lost both of those. But I mean, absolute fire sale. And I don't know that I don't know that their head coach is the guy to get the the job done. Um, in terms of doing a rebuild, that's just not um, his his mo um, by any means. Um, Steve Clifford, when he was in Charlotte um, and some of those competitive uh, teams with Al Jefferson and stuff like that, I mean he's a he's a grinded out, and that's why Orlando, you know, made it to the bubble and stuff last year, made the playoffs last year was because he can get his players to buy in schematically, defensively. Now, like that's a guy that. I just don't know if he's he's never really truly done a rebuild rebuild before. Um, I don't know if that's if his situation is going to last in Orlando. But I mean, yeah, absolute fire sale. They also got rid of Evan Fournier and sent him to sent him to uh, Boston, um, who then sent Daniel Tice to the Chicago Bulls too that we were just talking about. So I really like the depth now from the center spot. You got Vucevic and you've got I mean Daniel Tice has got to be up there in terms of backup bigs in the league. I mean he's. He was starting center for the Celtics all through the playoffs last year. Um, and he can step out and hit some threes too, just like uh, Vooch can. So um, some some kind of weird trades, but um, this is another kind of odd one. It's just weird to see some of these players on different teams, but um, and not like mega, mega stars trade, trading uh, teams. But um, yeah, Orlando's selling all out, it appears, and, and going full full rebuild with, with Markel Fultz and and Jonathan Isaac and and some of those guys and, and Mo Bamba and they're gonna be back in the lottery again for the foreseeable future. They trying to tank for Cade Cunningham. I think everybody's trying to take tank for Cade, although um Cade kind of underperformed in the um the NCAA tournament in his two games he he played. Um obviously I'd love to have him on the Cavs. I mean, he's very much uh like a, a Sean Livingston type who's got a, a really good little turnaround in the post. Sees the court so well, a six eight um, point guard who could um, he won't be there defensively and physically, uh, physic like from a physicality perspective. But I mean, he better shooting Ben Simmons. Yeah, who wouldn't want? I mean, that's a night matchup nightmare. He's going to be bigger than every other point guard he faces. I mean, you have to throw a small forward to him defensively. So, um, hey, that could be that could be a good spot to um, pair him along um, uh, with with Fultz. So. Yep, another another interesting trade there, Martin. Uh, there was one that I guess went under the radar a little bit for a sleeper team in the West, and it was the Mavs actually getting J. Yeah. John Reddick. I feel like that's a huge sleeper with the way that they're playing. You give another person that Luca could kick it out to to shoot, and I know the obvious thing is if Christoph Brzingis stays healthy, like 
they could they could be another sleeper team. I mean, at the beginning of the year, you and I both had Luca in our top two preseason MVP. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, and JJ's Seventh a good player. In the West right now at, at twenty three and twenty, um, nearly identical home away record, um, but not forming to what we what we thought they were going to no. be. Um, uh, this year but uh no i mean that just think about how much that's going to open up the the driving lanes for for luca too i mean because they when you have to double off and you've got jj reddick there as a shooter um you know that's yeah. that's tough man um and josh richardson's been playing really well too so i mean it's it's one of those things where i, I think it's really really going to help um uh luca from an assist category jj is going to get open looks from people doubling down on luca um, I mean, it's it. You're right. That is a sneaky, sneaky good trade for, uh, for them, and hopefully they can they can retain them beyond this year uh, to continue and 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 help in what kind of direction Mark Cuban and the Mavs want to go. Were you surprised that I know a lot of people were talking about Kyle Lowry getting traded, and they had people like the Sixers and the Lakers and other teams contenders for uh, Kyle. Were you surprised that the Lakers didn't make any moves during the trade deadline? I think I am a little bit. Um, I, I again, they don't have a whole lot of assets to give up, and from what I was reading, I think the the asking price on Lowry was was just too much for teams to to come up. I mean, they definitely chopped the crap out of him from Toronto's side. On and like you mentioned too, the uh, the Sixers were in the market for a point guard. Um, they ended up getting it. That's my sneaky trade to bring up um, to combat your. Your JJ Reddick one is they rescued George Hill um, from from Oklahoma City, and um, you know George is a, a very serviceable point guard who can who can get you in sets and, and long, long, long arms defensively. I think that's definitely going to be a, a sneaky um, sneaky get for Doc Rivers and the Sixers. I mean, Hill's thirty four, but um, I think that's definitely going to help uh, fill that need. I mean, maybe not to the extent Kyle Lowry would have, but uh, I mean, it's definitely there's probably some sentimental um, aspects, obviously, of, of what Kyle's done for the franchise in Toronto to hold on to him. So um, it's uh, it's not entirely surprising they, they held on to him or definitely looked at him um, and his value more than what maybe it actually is at this point in his career. But I mean, if you're the Lakers, it's kind of one of those things, defending champs, and you're just kind of biding your time until your big horses get back from injuries. And just hoping, hey, let's let's run it back until it it's proven not to work, and let's not sell the farm right now on on players. So they would have likely had to have involved Taylor Horton Tucker um, in that deal, um, just because he's probably about the only serviceable uh, asset that they have, young asset that they have. And you know, obviously, nobody wants to pay for Kyle Kuzma <laughs> right now. I think he had like four points last night. The Lakers, I will say, Lakers did beat the Cavs last night. We didn't have Colin Sexton and the Lakers didn't have AD or LeBron, but uh, Taylor Horton Tucker had a great game. Um, definitely a guy that they they need to hold on to, I think. So not entirely surprised. And shout out to Oklahoma City, though. They have stockpiled, I think, a lot of 30, picks. How many? 31, pit, 34 picks in the next seven years. It is going to be the G <laughs> League of the NBA. Because if you're yeah, if you're 15, 16, and seventeen right now, like statistically, there's I I don't know, I'm just ballparking. Probably there's probably like a almost a chance, which is I'm sure is way too high, like a twenty percent chance you're just going to play for Oklahoma City. If you're a top prospect and you're fifteen, sixteen, seventeen right now, <laughs> you might as well just like go down to the J.C. Penny, grab some grab some highlighter orange and some blue because. You're going to be playing for the Thunder. Like it's just, it's just bound to happen. Yeah, man, that that is great. Eddie, Evan, anything else about the trade deadline or anything else that you want to hit on? I know it was almost getting to your busy season. To talk about the playoffs. Yeah, um, I'm trying to think if there's, yeah, trying to think if there's anything else that that we missed. Again, there were a lot of trades happen. A lot of them just like really, really small ones. The one that we didn't discuss. Uh, our buddy Jeremy and I kind of went back and forth a little bit on this. Um, what's your thoughts on Norman Powell, 
uh, from the Raptors to uh, Portland for Gary Trent. And who else was thrown back in that deal? And uh, the uh, wing player that is, that never was, uh, the Dookie Rodney Hood, former Cav. Shout out. So Rodney, Rodney Hood. This is another one, too, where it didn't flow under the radar, but I don't, I don't think it made, like, big headways um, with, I guess, fans. And this trade, I was just like, it was more me. I was just like, okay. I mean, I don't know if this is going to propel Portland to go over, over the hump. I mean, they're already, I mean, Dame Dollar, who you don't have him in your top, at least top five for MVP candidate. You're crazy. Um, and then they got CJ McCollum back and Mello's actually been playing really, really well. But I mean, the guy's been, Norman Powell's been very underappreciated. Yeah. And, now that he's going to the Blazers, I want to just see how he's how he's going to be. Because, I mean, I think he's a pretty good player, but not that many people even know who he is. But I think it could help him in some way. I just I don't think it's going to help them get out of the second They're round. both really good players um, for different reasons, I think. So Powell is definitely more established yeah. than Trent. But um, Trent's averaging... 15 a game this year and he's only 22 so i mean like that that was like the last I'm trying to think like that's like the last young dude the blazers like had like that was their tail and horton trucker to to trade almost a couple years down the road since it's only year two now for for um uh tht in in los angeles but um pal's having a absolute monster of a season just despite how bad the uh the raptors have been he's averaging 23 and a half a game on shooting splits of 53, yeah. 45, and 86, he's a great defender. He's really good uh, from the top of the arc. So, I mean, if you watch him, like, of the three-pointers you see him hit, it's going to be the the pull-up or the catch-and-shoot right at the top of the arc. That's his uh, – I saw a shooting shot chart breakdown of his percentages uh, earlier before we hopped on. But, I mean, Gary Trent is no, no slouch. I mean, Powell's 27. He's five years on him, but – uh, Trent was a 2018 second round pick um, by the Blazers, but has really developed into something um, at, at, at 22 already. So he is hit, hit a set to hit restricted free agency and going to get paid this summer. Powell has a opt in. Uh, where, where was that number? As an opt in uh, for next year at, I think it was like 11, 11 million or something like that. But I mean, if you're 11.6 million. Um, but if you're Portland, you're already paying. Lillard and McCollum. Um, you just gave out two first round picks uh, to Houston for um, uh, Robert Covington, who's really kind of under. I mean, he's he's just not the on ball defender. I think the league thought he was. He's a great off ball defender, like like crazy. But they two first round picks for him. Now you give up Gary Trent. Like this is your bargaining power. So it's make or break time. I think for. Um, if you're the GM for the the Trailblazers and you're you're uh, Terry Stotts out there too, I mean you've got you've got some some older dogs. Um, not that McCollum is 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 old old, um, and you know, but your clock is ticking. No pun intended on 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 Dame and where Dame's going to go. Um, you've got Carmelo there too. Um, Ennis Cantor has been a bright spot for them, but I mean I think this isn't. Um, in the short term, it's probably going to really here in about two years when you don't have those first round picks, you don't have Gary Trent um, and you have no bargaining power or leverage to get better. So that's all I got. No, I agree. No, I agree. I agree. It'll be interesting. I mean, trade deadline. I mean, we already had all star weekend. Now we have trade deadline. I mean, the playoffs are going to be here before you know they're going to sneak up. I'm I'm somewhat I want to say I'm somewhat hopeful the Cavs can can sneak into at least the um, the play in games, even if it's just a hey, like you've got to win three straight against. I don't know, you got to win three straight against whoever the is sitting at the bottom of the the East, um, like a, a Indiana or a, um, a Charlotte if they fall that far, something like that. And you know, we might lose the first game, whatever. But um, it's I love the idea of the play in game. There's there's been so many good things that have come out of this kind of 
awful COVID situation where you get to just, hey, let's tweak tweak some things. I'm sure you've seen it at work too, where you guys have tried new things. I've seen it at my work and my day job where, you know, there's some new things, scheduling things that come up and you're like, you know, we never tried this. Let's let's do it because it helps. Um, and we're term thing and the NBA is looking at that with the whole play in games. I mean it it helps people feel like they're progressing somewhere, maybe even if they're not. <laughs> if you're the eleventh or team and like and it's just a wide margin, but you get to say, hey, we made the playoffs because we made the playing game. You're like giving yourself more credit than you actually deserve. But um no it's 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 exciting. I'm 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 interested to see how things move down the stretch and then before we know it out um after that it'll be um draft time and hopefully we'll get summer league again yep. and more off season movement. It's uh it's a twelve month sport. It's turning into a thirteenth thirteen month sport and twelve actual months. Um since obviously thirteen months don't exist. There's just that much movement and excitement and drama and Martin, I'm here for it all as always. Love it. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh before we Evan again just add on any more last words before we sign off uh no appreciate you having me on um it's uh it's always good good congratulations to the the rest of the team on getting uh over 1000 listens on the pod so we appreciate people checking into us uh listen to us uh ramble about our our niche interests and 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 deep deep passions um and uh let's uh let's shoot for two and double the number each time and continue to grow the empire man yeah man i ditto on all the things you said um next goal is shooting shooting for two and again appreciate everyone listening to wherever you listen to uh apple Podcasts, google Podcasts, spotify shoot sites like radio public breaker any of those podcast sites we appreciate you guys listening evan always appreciate you coming on giving the hoops education and i know i mean the playoffs and all that's coming so if you remember last year, Evan covers the entire round, round by round, and gives his full deep insight on that. So I'm excited to get those started back up again. And yeah, just again, thank you everyone for listening to the L7C podcast. And you guys take care. Thank you for listening to this episode of the L7C podcast. Be sure to like, rate, review, and subscribe to the channel. Follow us on all social media platforms, and we'll be talking to you guys soon. Take care.